um, carbo tune project. We're at the end of it. <laughs> Just a, such a different level of manufacturing materials I've never even seen before in my life. And we were allowed into that circle and made us be able to make one of the most advanced surfboards in the world. This tech, this construction, just is going to give you the liveliness time in, time out for a long time. That's what you'll get. Carbotune project was six, seven years ago that we first started this and it was at the same time that we started the hi-fi construction. We did start with what we were using as hi-fi stringers and I think it was like, I wanna say it was 3K 200 gram carbon and we're like, let's just wrap that around and get a starting point. And the first carbon boards that I got back, I was like, was so stiff. I couldn't even put a dent in them. And I'm like, oh, this sucks. But then we opened up a catalog of carbons and we're like, oh my God, there's so much more to this than just what we were thinking. So then we just started going through the different, you know, weights and the different, you know, from 3K to uni and all the different angles and stuff like that. And then we started getting something positive out of it, some positive feedbacks. Myself and Paul were doing all the R&D and I remember just unwrapping, you know, 10 board boxes at a time with all the different available materials at that time and just surfing them, you know, and getting just, and just getting um, more, just collecting data and getting all the right, you know, getting to a point where we're like, okay, that's kind of, the, that's, that's a pretty good board. And Julian comes along and it's like, I'm doing a rail project, which everyone knows about, and uh, make me some carbon boards, I need something strong. So that was another opportunity then for us to put some R&D under his feet, and he would, he'd come back to me and go, okay, there's some good stuff in here. I wanna say our next leap forward was when Luke Egan came back to the back to the brand and Louis had some really like one one kind of design that he loved and every time I made him that board he was like this thing's unreal. Yeah little little R and D board, full carbon, couple of little secret fiddly bits inside it, but I've been loving it so I just keep riding it, trying to pick something wrong with it, and it's been really, really good. Even, yeah, just the carbon's got this different flex. It's just, yeah, more of a detailed flex. I'm gonna have to get the boys some of these to try out because I'm loving it. And it's fine for Luke and I to go, yeah, okay, we like this, but give it to every person that we know around the globe in all the different conditions and let's get the feedback back. It just was a timing thing where they were here for Stapper, they got their carbon boards and Ryan's like, yeah, I just had the best surf out D-bar. Carly was ripping in two foot over finger with us when we were filming and Teresa was riding one going, wow, this board's so good. And Teresa had gone on and won a QS on hers. Mateus, Sammy Pupo is already putting his in the, as number three in his contest quiver. is still riding one of the first ones I made him still to this day and that's got to be four years ago and he still says it's as good as the first time he wrote it so that's up let's just go for a simple breakdown of what it is and then I'll tell you that it's not simple because it is a stringless EPS core it is a carbon exoskeleton certain grams certain angles, um, certain manufacturing techniques to even get it. To get the right strength and the right weight and then get the right flex is this, this mind boggling on what it took to get to this point.
So yeah, zero gravity and sub-zero. Boards of choice. Zero gravity is such an all-rounder. Um, so that was what model I chose to use. And we really did lean towards average waves because the construction really enhances that surfboard. Let's just be honest and say average conditions is average fun. And we wanted to take average conditions and make it really fun.